Welcome to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. A beautiful day in Madison for a Big Ten and Pac-12 matchup. Eighth-ranked Wisconsin hosting Oregon State with Urban Meyer, Chris Spielman, Quint Kestick down in the field. I'm Dave Pash. Wisconsin has won 29 straight regular season non-conference games, second longest active streak in college football. Oregon State wins the toss and will receive. Who will be the quarterback for the Beavers? It had been Ryan Katz, but he was benched last week. Malcolm Marble is the deep man for the Beavers. On an early start for Oregon State, 9 o'clock a.m. for them back west. He takes it out near the 30. Ryan Katz has started the last 13 games, but was benched at halftime of their loss to Sacramento State last week. Sean Mannion ended up going in and played the second half. Mike Riley, the head coach, said both will play today, but it will be Katz to start. Katz a junior at 18 touchdowns, 11 picks a year ago. Oregon State going with a true freshman at running back. After Malcolm Agnew, who's also a true freshman, had a rushing career best of over 200 yards last week. Out on the flat to Marcus Wheaton, gain of eight. One guy we'll see a lot of is another true freshman, Brandon Cooks. He had five touches last week. Also look for Chris Borland on a defensive side. On third downs, Chris will move from his middle linebacker position down to a defensive end. And Wisconsin has always had dominant pass rushers with Watt and Schofield. They're going to see if Inzegu can carry on that tradition today. And Katz, who can run, it's maybe a half yard, but it's short of the first down. So third down and short coming up. Well, that's the difference right there between Katz and Mannion. Katz does have the ability to scramble. Man, is more of your pocket passer. Third and short, you see, I think, you see if Wisconsin got its gaps fixed on defense. Last week, UNLV was able to shred them. Third and one, give your offensive line a chance to come off the ball, set the tempo, you're on the road. Let's go, one-on-one. -on -one. We'll find out who can win the battle. Straight ahead, it's Katz, and he'll move the chains. First down, Oregon State. It's got to be encouraging for Mike Riley after how poorly they played on offense, guys, last week against well, an FCS school. Well, right before that snap, well, here's Manning at quarterback now. But right before that snap, I was going to make the comment, that is a big-time play for this early in the game. You have to keep Wisconsin's offense off the field. You get your guys' take on this. Yeah, I don't like it. I'll tell you why in a minute. Mannion, the backup quarterback, different than Katz. Pocket passer, six foot five inch tall, looking downfield, has time, and throws a low pass that is picked off at the 40 yard line by Devin Smith. Now they're saying incomplete. I mean, so the ruling on the field is an incompletion. Thank you, Dave. And I think when you look at this, Mannion will see he's set up. The protection is good, and we'll see if Devin Smith did catch the football. They're right there. It looks like it did hit the ground, but I can't figure out. Katz, as Devin Smith tries to show it, Katz comes in, gets your first down, you take him out, you throw a deep ball with Mannion, and he short arms it. Mannion will stay in here for second and ten. Play is not being reviewed. It's hard to see the ball there anyway. Run play and nothing. It's Jordan Jenkins. Ball comes out, but runner is ruled down. It'll be a gain of one. I'm with Chris. I'm not quite sure how Mannion's in this game yet. I mean, you get a first down, get a little momentum, and all of a sudden you kill that momentum. This is a critical. He has to come up with a first down here. Well, what, I, what's the point? I mean, why do you start the kid? If you're going to bring Mannion in after three downs, then start Mannion. You get Katz, it gets you a first down. Two runs with his legs, and you take him out. But the, he has to feel there's some benefit. You guys have yet to come well, up with a reason why. I'd like to hear it. Get educated. Third and eight. See what Mannion does here. He has time. And his pass nearly intercepted again by Devin Smith. So two bad throws downfield in his fourth down. First of all, it's a nice job of breaking down the football on Devin Smith. Mannion staring down his receivers. A lot of time a young quarterback will do. The other thing, you got to throw the ball away from the defender. He threw that to the inside. You see Devin Smith up on the inside. Throw the ball away from the defender and throw your receiver open. Put it on the outside where only he can get it. Johnny Hecker to punt. 
Jared Abradaris, former walk-on, who's now a starting wide receiver, as well as the punt return man. Fair caught, just shy of the 20-yard line. We'll see Wisconsin's quarterback. There's no controversy. That position for the Badgers, it's Russell Wilson or bust. Back in Madison, where it's Russell Wilson's turn. Wisconsin quarterback who transferred from North Carolina State last week against UNLV had over 300 yards of total offense and three touchdowns, including a long rushing score. How about a little play action over the top deep to start the game to get the crowd into it? See if Oregon State's awake. You got press coverage right there. That's how you're going to stop the run. With eight guys in the box. Instead of running play, Monty Ball straight ahead, and he gets a yard to the 19. Well, guys, Russell Wilson, one of the most prolific transfers in college football history. When you look at his numbers in North Carolina State and then coming over to the Badgers because he graduated his major at Wisconsin, something not offered by NC State. Well, we saw him last year at North Carolina State. At one point, 300-plus passes without interception. He brings leadership, and he brings a sense of calm to this team. When you combine his arm with the running game in Wisconsin, they're a beast on offense. They got a bunch of good players around him, too. Wilson with a quick toss to Toon. Good catch out in the flat. Then he gets upended at the 25-yard line. About three yards short of a first down. Well, we already saw Monty Ball last week. He accounted for four touchdowns for the Badgers as they trounced UNLV. Ball also lost about 25 pounds from last year when he rushed for almost 1,000 yards. And you get a little change up with James White. Big Ten freshman rushed for more yards, over 1,000 last year. The only way to slow down this Wisconsin offense is load the line of scrimmage like TCU did. That's where Nick Toon has to be a playmaker. He's going to be one-on-one -on -one all day here against Oregon State. He picked up about six yards on that last reception. So a third and three for Wilson. And he's going downfield for two into double coverage. It's broken up and incomplete. Jordan Poyer had coverage, so three and out for the Badgers. So he forced that throw. If you take a look at his outside leverage man coverage on Nick Toon, he should have found, he should have came down and dropped it off. That was double coverage, free safety over the top, and outside leverage coverage on Toon. Nice job by Poyers looking and leaning and playing the hands, avoiding contact. Huge start for the Beaver defense. They need a little confidence after the Hornets of Sacramento State. We were able to have their way on the offensive side of the ball last week, especially through the air. Nordman will punt for Wisconsin. Poyer is the deep man for Oregon State. A booming kick, and Poyer, fair caught, right. inside the 20-yard line. A 56-yard punt by Nordman. Mannion came in. After Katz got Oregon State a first down, we'll see again if Katz re-enters the game at some point or if it's Mannion the rest of the way. Dave, I know we're early in this game still, but this is a huge drive for Oregon State. You have to keep Wisconsin off the field. You have to get some momentum. I'm still trying to figure out why he started Katz, played in three plays, and brought Mannion in. Well, let's see, Mannion. Your time to shine, big fella. Mannion will throw on first down. And has a completion. Then the ball comes out. It's ruled incomplete. Brandon Cooks, the intended receiver. It's a good throw, though. Right there, Mannion. A good throw. A nice, easy route. They had trips, which is a bunch route. So he has his choice. He did a good job. Protection was good. That's a confident throw to build his confidence. The only problem is to get your confidence, you need your boys to catch the ball, Urban. Yeah, they're struggling with finding playmakers right now. With the loss of the Rodgers brothers. They need to find a playmaker. Yeah, James Rogers is here, but not suited up, still out with an injury. Jacquiz Rogers, the running back, now in the NFL. They'll keep it on the ground, second and ten. Teron Ward, a true freshman, who's replacing a true freshman. Malcolm Agnew out with a hamstring after rushing for 223 yards last week. For Oregon State to stay in this game, I think maybe the reason they have Manning at quarterback, it's going to be the short passing game. They have real issues. True, a true freshman backing up a true freshman. The tailback's not the answer against Wisconsin. They have to have a short passing game to move the chains. Mannion going deep, one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Wheaton cannot make the catch. Finellis had good coverage down the sideline. It's fourth and ten. Both, both corners on both teams doing a good job. I like to talk about look and lean. Watch Finellis. He's in complete control of his body. 
his head goes back when the receiver's head goes back and he's leaning into the receiver with his body being able to make contact knock the receiver off balance but not getting called for interference as long as you look and lean into the receiver that's great position by Fidelis. outstanding first team all big ten corner a year ago for the Badgers Hecker with his second punt and off the side of his foot a lot better. Mm. That may have lost yardage. Well, they tried a rugby punt. I'm still not quite sure why. That one out of bounds at the 14-yard line. A negative four-yard punt. Never seen it. I've never seen that. A kick punter actually punt the ball backwards. With no wind. Yeah. <laughs> this is a rugby-style punt by Oregon State. And really, the only time you really tried to do that is the expected pressure from Wisconsin. Wisconsin did not show a pressure look. So that gives Wisconsin's offense first down at the Oregon State 14. Monty Ball to tailback, and here he is. And there's no running room for Ball. Good job so far by Oregon State against the run. Tackle made by Anthony Watkins. The Badgers are an outstanding red zone offense. 50 touchdowns in their last 57 trips inside the 20. The reason why is they run the football and they stay patient. If they get stopped for no gain or one yard like the previous play, it does not matter. As we move forward through this game, they will stay with the run. Right now, Oregon State is not letting the offensive linemen of Wisconsin get to the linebackers. Linebackers are running free for the Beavers. Ball again hit in the backfield and slammed down. Andrew Sayumalo making his second career start makes the play. One way to stop a power team or team that pulls is you get penetration. Right there, Sayumalo does a good job of getting on the edge, attacking Peter Kahn's and making a play in the backfield. Third and 13, you like Toon on a corner route or you like Pedersen or Abaderis. But here's Nick Toon right here, his favorite target. Wilson over the middle, Pedersen got it. Touchdown, Wisconsin. So on third and 12, it's a 17-yard touchdown pass by Russell Wilson, his third as a Badger. Toon or Pedersen, all day in the red zone for Wisconsin. Philip Welch, the normal place kicker, still out with an injury, so it's Kyle French, and he puts it through. And the Badgers take advantage of a negative four-yard punt. So Russell Wilson and the Badgers on top early at Camp Randall. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. And in part by Dr. Pepper. With 23 flavors, Dr. Pepper is always one of a kind. Welcome back to Madison, Lake Mendota. Beautiful this time of year. When we come back in a couple months, who knows, could be frozen over. As you look at uh, the punter, Johnny Hecker for Oregon State, minus four yards on his punt. Wisconsin takes advantage. And a touchdown pass by Russell Wilson, the 79th of his career, including, of course, all those TDs at North Carolina State. Keenan Parker and Rashad Reynolds, the deep men for Oregon State. It'll be Reynolds from the 15 on a short kick. And he's across the 30 to the 32. Well, Wisconsin's touchdown, they caught Oregon State in a two-safety look. The weakness of the two-safety look is down the middle of the field. That's where the Mike linebacker has to run with the number three receiver here, Pedersen. That's because they're worried about two and on the corner route, but it's all on the Mike linebacker. He has to carry number three. Obviously, he fails to do that. A great read by, uh, an easy read by Russell Wilson. Easy read. And that's, that's coaching one-on-one -on -one right there. It's a mental error and pass coverage. And I'll tell you what, with Russell Wilson, who you just saw in your pitcher, if you could go uh, too many mental errors in the secondary, he will burn you every time. Sean Mannion in the game at quarterback, hands it off on that fly sweep to Marcus Wheaton and a good pickup of about six on first down. You know, Coach Belima said he expected Oregon State to run some uh, 
with some speed sweeps. Well, that's a problem with Wisconsin's defense, Urban. Uh, a lot of problems, and Chris Borland, the middle linebacker, was talking about this, is their defense has had problems keeping contained. So if you're Oregon State, you attack that problem, see if they fix the problem right there. They have not fixed the problem. Mannion will throw on second down, and Borland, what an athletic play. He almost picked that off after stepping in front, knocking it away with the left hand. That's a glimpse right there of what that guy can do. Well, here's a young guy right here, Chris Borland. Number 44 in the middle of your screen right here. It's a great break on the football. One thing he possesses is burst. I had a nice little chat with him yesterday about how to watch film. He's moving from outside to inside linebacker. And he needs to visualize, and we'll get into that in a second. Mannion with time, and it is pulled in. First down grab, Marcus Wheaton to the 42. Chris Boylan has make a transition from an outside linebacker to an inside linebacker, which will be a natural position for him as he moves. Moves on, and you can see right there the injured player, Devin Smith. Well, Dave, we got we got a chance to listen to Chris Spielman talk to all Big Ten linebacker talking to another Big Ten linebacker about getting ready for this game. You had him visualizing what seven or eight games yesterday in his mind before actually playing a game today. Back in a moment. Wisconsin's forces in the secondary depleted with an injury to Devin Smith, a senior starter at corner. Looks like he rolled up on that left ankle. Good thing he walked off, which is always encouraging as they're checking the ankle. Devin Smith, a good football player. So Marcus Cromartie will come into the game, and really not a lot of depth in either corner of safety for the Badgers. I'd go after him right now if I'm Oregon State, see if he's warmed up. Mannion, redshirt freshman quarterback, looking for his first completion. And again, Fanella stepping in front, knocking it down incomplete. Here's Reese Davis now in the studio. All right, Dave, time for a Taco Bell studio update. Ohio State jumping on top against Toledo. Boy, how good has Jake Stoneburner been? Three touchdowns last week, and now his fourth touchdown grab. That one a one-handed affair, and Toledo just answered their first points ever against Ohio State. Right here at 7 nothing, Wisconsin, Reese, Oregon State, getting near midfield, playing a freshman quarterback who did not start but came in on the initial series Colby Prince the tight end from Marty on the stop short of the first down so third down and about four it's a good call by Mike Riley and his staff Cromartie came in the first play they did was letting blitz to get his feet wet and now you attack him to see if he's mentally into the game Kenny Langford the offensive coordinator excellent call Mannion's pass knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Borland was there for the Badgers, and it's fourth down and four. And this is what they've been expecting from Borland. Got off to a slow start last week, but again, his recognition, getting his hands up, knowing you can't make a play. He's on the blitz right there, keeps with the play, and gets into the throwing lane. Urban, you were saying yesterday, you think Borland is what college football is all about. Well, we got a chance to meet him. He's an overachiever. He's always been a big fan of Wisconsin. Came in, went to their camp, proved to the head coach he belonged there, and they offered him a scholarship. Aberdares waiting for it. And Oregon State down there all over it. And the Badgers are going to start around their six-yard line. That was the initial touch by Jordan Poyer. So it'll be Badger ball deep in their own end with a 7-0 lead when we come back. Russell Wilson can do it all for the Badgers at quarterback. 
Well, physically, he has all the tools. Here you see him rolling out on the move, making an outcut throw to the field. Very difficult throw. Comes back and throws a speed post. That's a big boy pass by a quarterback. And then finally, when the receivers are covered, he can extend the play, uses athleticism. Here he takes it for a 46-yard touchdown last week. Wisconsin's not had a quarterback that can do these things in quite a while. A great athlete to control the ball. Think about it, too. He's replacing a guy that won the Unitas Award as the top senior quarterback in Scott Tolzien, who led the nation in completion percentage. I think Russell Wilson can do even better. Wisconsin with negative two rushing yards prior to that play as James White powers forward for only a yard or two. Nice job so far by Oregon State. One of the things we talked about what Wisconsin's offensive line does so well, and we saw this on film, was they get to the second level. That means they double-team the defensive linemen, then they get up and climb up on linebackers. Right now, the defensive linemen are doing a great job of holding up the Wisconsin offensive line, not letting them block the second level. They're winning the battle up front, which we did not expect. Another run play to White, and again, not much on the ground, although Good second effort gets him out near the 13-yard line. Boy, Chris is right, and after you watch the Oregon defense against Sacramento State, we didn't expect this. They are playing, they are controlling the line of scrimmage against Wisconsin. Remember, guys, Wisconsin's got a good offensive line, but they did lose three players who were all starting in the NFL on opening week, including Bill Nagy, who didn't even start for Wisconsin, yet he's a starting guard for the Dallas Cowboys. Playing tight man coverage on two right up there. Wilson with time. And he's got Byrne as tight end for a first down out near the 28 for a gain of about 15 in a first down. Boy, he's got great pocket presence. Great pocket presence. Sits in the sits in the pocket. Let's the play develop, doesn't panic. He knows he's got five strong offensive line, one of the best coach offensive lines in the country. And completes a pass. That's well executed play by Wisconsin. They've had some good tight ends over the years here at Wisconsin. Lance Kendrick, second round pick of the Rams. Garrett Graham prior to him. Owen Daniels, Travis Beckham. Run play on first down. And picking a hole is White across the 30. Here's Reese in the studio. All right, guys, check in once again on this Toledo, Ohio State game and storming through to block the punt for the Rockets, Keyshawn Wilcher and Toledo winds up deep in Ohio State territory. They would score a touchdown, first points they'd ever scored against Ohio State. And then Eric Page took the snap on the two-point conversion, finds Hank Keithley, Toledo on top, 8-7. Well, we thought Reese Ohio State would get a better test than last week against Akron, nothing there for ball on the carry. Make that white, maybe a yard. So it'll bring up third down and four. Guys, what are you looking for here out of their offense? Well, I'm looking for the offense to get two involved, but the other thing defensively, you're not getting any pressure with just four. So it's third and four. You want to bring pressure, cover all the pass lanes so Russell Wilson can't run for the first down. And so far, you've been doing a decent job playing man-to-man. -man. So on this down, if I'm Oregon State's defense, Man-to-man -man with pressure. That's what I look for. Wilson finds two and over the middle. First down, Badgers. Two to the 46 for 13 yards. So you play a soft zone. What are you going to get? You're going to get Toon finding the soft zone, and Russell Wilson knows where Toon is. We've got a too high look or too deep, two safeties deep. It's a simple pitch and catch. And if you're going to play the number two receivers, guys, you got to take away the inside, the middle of the field. Dave, hey, watch for a shot right here, Russell, Russell Wilson. Look for a down the field throw. We got one back and two tight ends here on first down. Monty ball to tailback, out in the flat to tune, and no running room as he's pushed out of bounds by Anthony Watkins for a minimal game. Even though they didn't throw the ball down the field, that's something that's a setup. Now what you'll do is you'll have Toon do the same route where he'll swing, and you'll have Abadaris take it off down the field. So that's something that sometimes you run a play to call a play later and set that guy up and set the defense up. Red Bielema's done a terrific job at Wisconsin. 22 and five the last two plus years and won the Big Ten at age 40 a year ago. Here's second and nine. Play fake. Wilson 
looking downfield. Now to the sideline where it's caught. And a first down grab by Jared Avradaris. I'll tell you the two most invaluable, most important players on Wisconsin's offense are going to be Abu Darius and Nick Toon because when they get into the Big Ten Conference play against real quality opponents, here's Abu Darius right here, runs an excellent route. He's by the far their best blocker as well. Real, real reliable player. But when you get against good opponents, Dave, they're going to play man-to-man -man coverage to try to stop the run. These guys got to get open against man-to-man. -man. They're at the 41 of Oregon State. Here's James White. And White, who last year rushed for over a thousand yards as a freshman, having a little trouble finding running lanes today. Lance Mitchell there with a the stop. You talk a lot, Urban, about staying on schedule, getting a lot of yards on first down, but it's not happening so far. No, I, I, you have to give Oregon State credit. They're getting a bunch of small victories here against this powerful offense from Wisconsin. In our discussions and after watching film on Friday, we thought their offensive line for Wisconsin would dominate. And right now, that's not happening. Thought they'd be a lot of second and five, third and two. We did see a third and four, which Wisconsin picked up. Inside run, and it's White spilled. No gain on the play. Dylan Wynn, a true freshman, on the tackle, so it's third and long. Now, they did score a touchdown on a third and long earlier in the game. Well, this has been the Russell Wilson show on third down. That's how they're moving the ball. It's certainly not on first down with ball and white running the, running the football. I still maintain Oregon State. You have to take a shot and come after him. You can't let him sit back there. He's too good. He knows the offense too well. He knows there's a second, third, and fourth option. Looks like they're in a two deep structure here, Chris. You got to carry Pedersen. That's where they scored a touchdown. So two safeties deep as Russell Wilson drops, and he's going down. On the other side of midfield, Wilson is sacked by Rusty Fernando, and the Badgers have to punt the ball. Take a look at Rusty Fernando and see what kind of move. He hits him on an inside move. Here's Rusty Fernando up top, and let's take a look. First of all, he's got a good get off, and he comes with a nice club rip. He does a good job of clubbing the shoulder, dipping his shoulder, and throwing the uppercut and beating his man to the inside. That's great individual effort by Rusty Fernando, getting the pressure and the sack. Norton the punt. And Poyer under it. Fair caught at the 13-yard line. Well, two great coaches square off today, 3.30 on ABC as Alabama meets Penn State. College football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings on ABC. Joe Paterno against Nick Saban. I don't think it's going to be like it was last year, but that's a really tough order for Joe Paterno and the Nittany Lions, but they're very good at home. Alabama, as we all know, can play on the road. It's all going to be on that quarterback play in Alabama, who they find if they get some production from him, because you know they've got a lot of talent around him. And same with Penn State. Sean Mannion back in the game at quarterback. He's played ever since that opening series when Katz was pulled. Inside run gets maybe two or three Jordan Jenkins. Brendan Kelly on the stop. And that's the end of the opening quarter. Honestly, after watching tape yesterday, I know both you guys thought it'd be a lot worse at this point. The score they did get was after they got possession inside the 15-yard line after a bad Oregon State punt. So the Beavers playing well on the road, down seven. A perfect September day here in Madison. Blue sky, temperatures in the mid-70s. Wisconsin with a 7-0 lead as we get ready to start the second quarter. Ryan Katz began the game at quarterback for Oregon State. Got him a first down, but after he rushed on third down and one and moved the chains, he was pulled for Sean Mannion. Not being told whether it's an injury. Coach did want to play both. And they run it left side with Jenkins, and he gets good yardage. That'll bring up third down. I think you're married to Mannion now for the game. I mean, now you can't pull that kid. So you committed to him. You married him. Let him play. Let him learn. Let him have some success. So Katz is done in my eyes. If you want, is Mannion your guy, then let him go. Why, why not start him? Then why pull him after three plays? You asking me? Well, ask him both. I have no idea. Coach? How's that matter up the point for you, Dave? Apparently, Coach didn't have an idea either. <laughs> i get you after this play. Third down and five. Mannion. Cooks 
first down across the 25-yard line. Watch this. This is a bunch formation. Three wide receivers lined up together. They do that to confuse the coverage. Take a look, and everybody's running a read route right here. They recognize it's zone coverage by Wisconsin, so they'll sit it down in front of the zone. That's a good job of Cooks being a true freshman, running to the sticks and securing a catch. It's a good job of reading man and zone coverage to sit it down. If it's man, you run away from the man. Mannion, 3 of 10 passing, and off play action, out of the backfield to Wheaton, nowhere to run, he'll lose a yard. Let's check in with Reese for an update on the Buckeyes. And Dave, the last time the Buckeyes lost to a team from the state of Ohio, 19-21 to Oberlin. They lost 7 to 6, but they got their hands full. Terrence Owens to Eric Page, and Page set sail 66 yards. The Rockets up 15 to 7. Only the second game for Luke Fickle as Ohio State head coach. Ryan Katz back in the game now on second and 11. So again, mid-series, Mike Riley making quarterback team. And Katz will run. That's what he does well. And he gets a couple there. Borland made the tackle. Well, Dave, my comment on how Mike Riley decided to play these quarterbacks. First of all, he's one of the most respected coaches in college football. Has success in the pros. And has done a great job developing quarterbacks at Oregon State. So I think he really wanted to get Mannion in the game early. I think he understands that the only way to beat and compete with this Wisconsin team is at a very high percent of success underneath passing game. And that's why he went with his guy. And he goes with Katz just to call him in to, to run the football. But it's tough for your offense, in my opinion, to get into a rhythm, especially if you're substituting on second and 11. Does this also tell you what he thinks about his running backs with Agnew not here, that he's bringing a quarterback in to run the ball? I think it's exactly. And, it, and it, to keep this game close, you can see they're doing a very good job completing passes underneath, finding open zones. And he felt, and I'm just, this is my opinion, with Mannion as a big six foot five quarterback, drop back there, throw it, keep, keep control of the ball, don't listen with Wisconsin's offense back on the field, and move the chains of the short pass. So again. much for my marriage to Mannion there. Yeah. <laughs> Married to him as the passing quarterback, it would appear. He's back in. By the way, Pat Muldoon was the Badger shaken up as Mannion returns for third and eight. See his numbers so far. His eight of 12 last week against Sacramento State, a game that Oregon State lost. First time a Pac-12 team lost to a non-FBS school in 15 years. Mannion. Off the drop back, it's caught but well short of the first down. Colby Prince, the tight end, made the grab, but Oregon State will punt the ball. It's tough to convert third and 12. You have everybody running routes underneath. Wisconsin is doing a good job of setting down on receivers. Eventually, if you're Oregon State, you got to take a shot down the field. Johnny Hecker's last punt was great, but the last time he punted down here, his punt went negative four yards off the side of his foot. Averaderis is deep for Wisconsin. And it hops inside the 30 and out of play. Penalty flag down at the 26-yard line of Oregon State. First flag of the game by either side. Personal foul. We'll see if Wisconsin tacks on 15 or makes him punt again, depending on whether it was a dead ball foul or not. Personal foul on the kicking team, number 57. 15-yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the kick. First down. So Wisconsin will get the ball close to midfield when we return. Badgers up 7-0. Back in Madison, Wisconsin normally an excellent team running the football. Well, a big part of Wisconsin's success is the ability of the receivers. You can see in the Rose Bowl a year ago, the receivers can dig out safeties. And here against uh, TCU, they do a great job knocking them out of there. Today, Oregon State is doing a great job coaching the safeties to beat the angle of the wide receiver. So here the receiver has the same responsibility, but he's not getting his job done, and you hit him for a short game. You can tell they've worked on that all week in practice. And they're not giving that receiver an angle to block that safety. Yeah, he was hurt by his alignment a little bit. A split too wide, the safety's too far inside. It doesn't give time for the receiver to get on the block. Only three rushing yards for Wisconsin. 
so far in this game. Early second quarter, a 7 0 lead. Wilson flushed out of the pocket, being chased. He'll talk. And he'll pick up positive yardage into Oregon State territory for a gain of four. Michael Doctor chased him out. Last week, Wisconsin just tore up. UNLV led 20 to nothing after the first quarter. Their only points in this game after a horrible punt gave them possession inside the Oregon State 15. And look at the difference in terms of yards per carry from last week. Well, if Oregon State can force them on first down to play shotgun offense, they're going to they're gonna stay in this game. Here's second and six. Play fake for Wilson. Everybody covered downfield. Now Wilson finds Abradaris. We caught it at the 30. There is a flag down in the backfield. Anthony Watkins had coverage. Let's see what the marker is. You know, one of the reasons for the success of Oregon State right now in their run defense. Holding on the offense, number 58. 10 yard penalty previous spot. Still second Ricky Wagner, the left tackle. Is because they're able so far to match up man to man. We see Ricky Wagner. Right here on the holding. Take a look. But my point being, as I was making the point, was that if you're able to man to man up, that allows your safeties to come up and be nine guys in the box, and it's tough to block. They're doing a good job of playing man to man. Tell you what, Chris, Wisconsin offense is not built for this style of play. Empty, no backs on first down, and drop back pass on second down. And again, got him off schedule, right? Second and 16. Wilson to Abradaris again, turns, and gets inside the 47-yard line, brought down by Poyer at the 46. One of the impressive things about Russell Wilson is how quick he's picked up Paul Christ offense from coming from North Carolina State. That's the, uh, a tribute to him and the intelligence that he has, football intelligence that he has as a quarterback. Look, he knows where to go with the ball. He doesn't make mental errors. And he grasps the concept of levels of throwing the football. How about the fact they need the McCaffrey, too? Guy transfers in, takes the place of Scott Tolson. Teammates love him right away, and he's named captain. Third and five. Wilson gets rid of it to Cone, and he's loose inside the 40-yard line. Knocked out at the 29 by Lance Mitchell. It's a 17-yard pickup. Watch Poyers right here, Urban. This is where Toon, if he has time, he's going to run away from it. He does a good job of recognizing that it's man coverage, so he keeps his route across the field. Poyers gets caught looking back at the ball. If you're a defender playing man-to-man, -man, if you look back at the ball, the offensive player will run away from you as we have another injured Beaver on the field. And it's Lance Mitchell who made the uh, tackle there. I keep going back, Dave, about the impact players on the Wisconsin offense. Nick Toon is as important as anybody on that field. I know there's a great offensive line. I know Russell Wilson. We have two great backs, but at the end of the day, you can't stop the run. And how do you stop the run? You load that box. You single up corners on receivers like TCU did. And if they can't beat man-to-man -man coverage, you're going to struggle all year, yeah. especially when the talent, when you're facing an extremely talented secondary. And you got that coming down the road. They just beat man right there. And that's what they need to do. And he's through the ball. Early downs that will help. First down inside the 30 yard line of Oregon State. A lot of pass play so far in this drive. Now they'll run it. Monty Ball trying to cut to the outside. And Ball spins out of a tackle. Doctor got enough of him though. To the 26 yard line is Ball for three yards. Anytime you can get a ball going east and west as opposed to north and south, you got a chance. And that was a designed north and, north and south play. That was off tackle power. That's designed to go hit the A gap. And once again, Oregon State controlling that deep, that line of scrimmage right now. A gap between the center and guard, right? right. Second and seven at the 26. Play fake for Wilson, and wide open is Pedersen. Already a touchdown today. Picks up a first down and a gain of 11 to the 15-yard line before Ryan Murphy catches up to it. 
I just want to really take a look at Russell Wilson here. does a great job. It's a play action fake. He finds a fullback in the flat. Quick release. That's a smooth quarterback back there, guys. He adds a di different dimension to Wisconsin offense. If they get this run game going with his athleticism, his quick release, that's one of the best offenses in the country once they get it done. And his knowledge of nowhere to go to football right now. Again, play action. Wilson initially looked for Abradaris. He was covered, so Wilson throws it away. Guys, Wisconsin, a team that last year won the Big Ten under Brett Bielema for the first time since 1999, first Rose Bowl since 2000. Are they good enough to get there again or maybe take it a next step and play for a BCS championship? Well, Dave, you know how I feel about Wisconsin. And for those of you that don't, once Russell Wilson committed to Wisconsin, they immediately became my favorites to win the Big Ten championship. And I say this, a lot of people think I'm crazy, but they also are a sleeper for the national championship in my eyes. Here's Ball, tripped up at the 10-yard line. It's gain of five, so it'll bring up third down and five. You know, Dave, you ask that question when you start talking about BCS Bowls and BCS National Championship. The question I have is about their defense. They gave up some yardage against UNLV. I know the coaches feel real strong about their defensive front. The question is, can they hang in there once they reach the top uh, level of the Big Ten? They got Nebraska here. They're at Ohio State, at Illinois, Penn State here. Third and five. Single coverage on Nick Toon. Top of your screen there. That's where Wilson's going. Jump ball, Toon! Rashad Reynolds had coverage, but no contest between him and Toon. Touchdown, Badgers. We've been waiting for it. This is Nick Toon's going to get this all year. What a great release. Locks the hips of the corner, Oregon State. And I think that's a great throw. That's a, that's a receiver and a quarterback that have worked together throughout training camp on a fade route. That's impossible to defend where he threw that football. 6-3 working on 5-10. That impressive. also helped. That's really impressive right there. Five catches already in the game. Had 36 last year as he was injured, missed four games, missed the spring after foot surgery, but the coaches say Toon is healthy and he's looking like a star. 14-0 Wisconsin leads, second touchdown pass for Russell Wilson, first touchdown catch of the year for Toon. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. Welcome back to Wisconsin as they are preparing Chris Spielman's pregame meal. There you go. All of it right there for you. I'll take the challenge. Wisconsin on top, 14-0 midway through the second quarter. Russell Wilson, as Wisconsin has struggled to run the ball, just 15 yards. Wilson has thrown for 112 in two touchdowns. This one fielded along the sideline. What are you doing if you're Keenan Parker? They're going to have the ball inside the five-yard line. A terrible mistake there by Parker, who's a junior. Now for today's AFLAC trivia question. Who are the only two coaches in Big Ten history to start their careers with more consecutive non-conference wins than Brett Bielema? Does you have any idea? We'll figure it out, I think. I think Bo Schembecker might have to be near there. Sean Mannion back in a quarterback for Oregon State. Five of 12, only 24 yards passing. Now it's time for Oregon State to earn their keep around here on offense and hold up their end of the bargain. Why did he feel that kickoff along the sideline there? Terrible mistake. Play clock at one. They didn't get it off. Delay a game. Delay of game on the offense, number four. Families before it's half the distance to the goal. Still first down. 
That's tough to do. We just wonder if the ineffectiveness right now on offense has something to do with this quarterback rotation or a redshirt freshman playing in this tough environment. Well, they're out of sync, and what I mean by that's tough to do is that you're coming off of a kickoff return, right. and you get to delay a game. I mean, that's not really what you normally see from a Mike Riley coach football team. So the ball is just outside the two-yard line. Teron Ward, a true freshman, is about six yards deep. They'll give it to him. He gets out of the end zone, but then stood up. No gain on the play. Borland there. For Wisconsin, along with Ethan Armstrong. Now, Oregon State, a team that from 2006 to 2009 had 36 wins. And last year, the drop-off, 5-7 and seven record, and then the loss to Sacramento State a week ago. Just, uh, and looking forward here for Wisconsin's defense, you know, I'm going to try for the safety. I'm going to blitz everybody because I know my defense is playing well. They're struggling offensively. Why not get a good play and try to drive the stake before halftime? Got a freshman quarterback throwing out of his own end zone on the road. He stands in there and delivers the pass caught at the 32-yard line by Jordan Bishop. Big time throw, eh, Urban? As big a play of the day for Oregon State to get out of that deep in their own end zone, hold up their end of the bargain, and more important than everything, let Oregon State's defense get their rest. What a Great throw. Great concentration by the Oregon State receiver. Excellent play. They'll run the ball here on first down. Good patience by the back. Jordan Jenkins, and he gets about eight yards before Marcus Cromarty makes the tackle. Similar to what Wisconsin does in their running game, getting two big offensive linemen out on the edge, sealing the outside and the inside, as you see the injured Josh Andrews, number 69 for the Oregon State Beavers on the field. But they did a good job of sealing outside and inside, creating a lane for Jordan Jenkins to get a good positive yards on first down. So it'll be second and three when we come back to Madison. Starting left guard Josh Andrews shaken up accidentally leg whip by a teammate on the previous play. You just see your teammate come flying in here. Just good job of trying to finish blocks. And right there, Colin Kelly, number 64, gets tossed in to big Josh Andrews. One of the things is, guys, that's why Lyman wear knee braces. You're so defenseless because you're sticking on a block and you have bodies falling over. I think it's a great idea that all coaches have their offensive linemen in knee braces to help protect them because you never know when those shots are coming and you always have people falling on your legs. So you got Michael Lamb, a walk-on in the game. So right now, Oregon State with four walk-ons on their offensive line. And three of those guys are their best offensive linemen. And the guy they're handing the ball to is a former walk-on. Jordan Jenkins. And their starter, Teron Ward, is a true freshman, is replacing another true freshman who's hurt. Against the Big Ten defending champions. <laughs> Welcome to Camp Randall, huh? And then you got the redshirt freshman quarterback, Sean Mannion, who's been rotating with Ryan Katz. Tell you this, though. Tell you this, Dave. Oregon State's ready to play. You got to give Mike Riley credit. They're doing an excellent job hanging in there now. They're, they don't have the talent right now that Wisconsin has. You can see that on film. You can saw that last week. Yeah, I want to go back to that. When Wisconsin had him backed up, you have a, a redshirt freshman quarterback. You got him against the wall. That's when you should have brought the pressure. I, I know we don't like to look back too much, but right there, that's a chance where I think Wisconsin blew an opportunity because of the youth of the quarterback. Bring your pressure instead to hit Jordan Bishop down the seam for big first down. I just made a mental note if Chris Spielman's a defense coordinator I'm coaching against him, he is coming after us now. <laughs> well, Especially if I got me a redshirt freshman. Yeah. I, I'd have to agree with you, Chris. I'm not, I'm not I have to agree with you. So how do you counter that? Indeed. Your job to figure out, right? You know what's coming. Second and three. Here's Mannion. And he's in trouble and gonna get sacked. Two guys got him. Gilbert and Buttram. It'll be third and long. Gilbert and Butcher had their pass rush ears on. What I mean that their rear ends are up. They're coming with pass. They get a blitz. You have miscommunication. Mannion is not going to beat you with his feet. Instead of stepping up into the pocket, he steps out of the pocket. Good push inside. Force the quarterback to your outside rushers. Outside rushers finish. Loss of 10. 
Oregon State's been decent on third down, but this is third and 14. Try to set up the middle screen, and the defender is right there, and it's an incompletion. Colby Prince was walloped by Brendan Kelly. Read it immediately when the ball touched his hands. Uh, Hemer actually was there defensively for Wisconsin, and now Oregon State has to punt. Coach Beanla, Beanla said that he saw an opening in Oregon State's punt protection. This would be the ideal time to come after it. Aberderis is back. The struggle for Johnny Hecker, the punter. He rolls this one inside the 35. And Aberderis picks it up, steps out at the 28. Wisconsin leads 14-0 and has the ball. When we come back, Russell Wilson already a couple touchdown passes. I'm Reese Davis, Sports Center, right now, presented by Discover Card. Larry Scott, the commissioner of the Pac-12, said last night he hoped there was no expansion, but sources tell our Joe Shad that it's still a fluid situation. Administrator of Big 12 schools saying it's possible. And USC running back DJ Morgan going to start at tailback against Utah today, despite the fact that Mark Tyler has returned from his one-game suspension. Reese, Oregon State, a member of the Pac-12 North Division, along with Cal, Stanford, Oregon, Washington, Washington State. Wisconsin in a new Big Ten Divisional lineup, a member of the Leaders Division with Ohio State, Penn State, Purdue, Illinois, Indiana. James White, the running back. Wisconsin on top, 14-0. First down at their 28-yard line. White off the edge, nowhere to go, and a gain of one. Badgers continue to struggle running the ball. Russell Wilson's been the story. Offensively, he's 10 of 12, and eight of his 10 completions have gone for 10 or more yards. Accounted for 84% of their offense today, and obviously, at times, was a one-man band in North Carolina State. You take away Oregon State's fake or bad punt, and Russell Wilson, this score is 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah, that punt. It was negative four yards. Badger started at the 14 of Oregon State. And Wilson threw a touchdown pass. Inside run. White finds a hole, but can't get away from the defender, Lance Mitchell. It's third down. All right, let's see, talk about why Oregon State's taking away the run. The one thing we normally see from a Wisconsin offensive line is that they change the line of scrimmage, meaning they push the line of scrimmage. Right now, Oregon State's throwing the first punch. They're not letting Wisconsin push them forward. They're pushing Wisconsin backward. They're not getting to the second level, and that's why you have unblocked players coming up and making good open field tackles on the running backs. That's why. Wilson steps away from pressure, takes off. Wilson will step out of bounds after picking up the first down. There is a penalty flag, actually two flags down. Gate of 15. Anthony Watkins ran Russell out eventually. The value of a quarterback that can extend a drive is what every coach in America is looking for. And we were talking about this. Has Wisconsin ever had a guy like Illegal that in a quarterback in the position? Back. On the offense, number 20. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. Still third down. So that's on running back James White. So wipe out the first down. It will be third down and long. Mm. Crucial penalty on James White. And really don't need it because you got to understand that Russell Wilson has the first down. Now, the one thing you can do if you want to bump into the guy and throw your hands above your head, then sometimes you get away with a block in the back. But when you extend your arms and push the guy in the back after your receiver or quarterback gets the first down, that's a mental error on James White. You so, know, Wisconsin's the least penalized team in America a year ago, yeah. and after penalty, they pulled the guy right out of the game. So because it's a spot foul, it's third down and short. From the I formation, here's Ball, and Ball charges ahead for the first down to the 40-yard line, hit by Ted Tiunga. But the Badgers move the sticks. Watch Abadaris number four come in your screen. Urban talked about this, about receivers blocking for Wisconsin. It's a must in order to play for this football team. Watch Abadaris right here, number four, come into your screen. It's not a devastating block, but it's enough to stop any type of penetration. If you're going to play for Wisconsin, you've got to be able to block as a wide receiver. 
White straight ahead across the 45, spilled after a gain of eight yards by Fernando. For the block, you're always going to have a wide receiver or a tight end or a wing at the point of attack to always make sure uh, to block the extra defender. If you don't have the guy at the point of attack, you're going to use a backside wing or backside fullback to pull around. So you're always going to have that eight defender you got to block. So you call that power plus one. Second and two. And nothing on the ground for James White. Ryan Murphy and Scott Crichton there for Oregon State. So it'll bring up third down and short. The best thing about Wisconsin, they know who they are. They spend quite an amount of time on getting the receivers, getting the tight ends in position to make that extra block, to, to have enough personnel to make that extra block. I'll spread it out here on third and short. This is where you almost have to have a spy on Russell Wilson. Very capable of running the football, as we've witnessed. Wilson just stands and fires, and Toon goes down to make the first down catch at the 47-yard line of Oregon State. All right, here's how you know a wide receiver is in tune with his quarterback. The coverage was off. That means there was a cushion. If the cushion's off, he's running a slant. Now, they have contact with each other and what to run. If there was press coverage, he would take that slant and he would turn it into a fade like we saw in the touchdown. That's a receiver and quarterback reading each other's mind, being on the same page. Six catches today for Tooney and two last week against UNLV. Here comes a one-on-one -on -one shot to Tooney. Keep it on the ground. Stiff arming down the sideline. Ball inside the 30. Out of bounds at the 26-yard line. It's a gain of 21 for Monty Ball, their biggest play on the ground today. That was actually well defended by Oregon State, but Ball just does a great job with his athleticism, outruns Oregon State defense. That was well defended. Yeah. Hoyers lost the edge, though. He went too far inside with Toon, lost sight of the ball carrier. When you lose contain, a patient runner like Monty Ball does have the speed and vision to bounce outside. From the 26 of Oregon State, back to the ground game, Ball with his center, Peter Kahn's out there, gets a great block. And then gets the first down to the 12. Boys, Kahn's an excellent blocker out in space. Isn't it a luxury, Coach Meyer, that when you have a center that can pull, to be able to snap the ball and pull like Peter Kahn's? Well, we've had the last two centers we had for their Pouncey brothers playing in the NFL right now. If you can get a 320-pound man to roll out there, he's blocking usually second second level defenders, and those are mismatches. Yeah, right there he took on a corner. It's sure, hard to find. Feet. Centers are hard to find that can do that. Tenth play of the drive for the Badgers. First down at the 13. Straight ahead, White. And he powers inside the 10 to the 8-yard line for about 5. Anthony Watkins meets him there. Well, they got to the second level. Ryan Groy, number 79, was able, as we talked about, to get to the second level, allowing James White not to be touched until he's 5 yards down the field. A timeout, two remaining for Wisconsin. Now time to answer our AFLAC trivia question. Fielding Yost and Joe Paterno, the only two coaches in Big Ten history to start their career with more consecutive non-conference wins than Bielema. Of course, Paterno did it when Penn State was not in the Big Ten. That's part of Wisconsin's philosophy. I mean, their non-conference schedule exactly isn't the toughest in the world, which I have no problem with which has helped Brett get that 21-0 record. Oh, this is big for Oregon State. They got to find a way to hold the three, huh? With the way their offense is played. Wisconsin is wearing down the defensive line now of Oregon State. Play 11 coming up. They'll lean on him again, running white, and white trying to keep his balance. Short of the marker, it'll be third down. Here's the, the power plus one that Urban was talking about where they had three poolers pulling into the hole. And what are you going to do on third down? Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to run power plus one because right now Urban made the point. You got guys on the, in the white shirts sucking air a little bit. They're tired. Keep coming after them. Keep pounding them because third down, if you don't get it, you can still run it on fourth down. And I will guarantee you Wisconsin will get two yards in two plays. 
We had a timeout by Oregon State. 33 seconds left. So the Badgers up 14 nothing. And a third down and three coming up. Let's head back to the studio and check in with Reese Davis. All right, Dave, Mark Van Lou Holtz is going to join me on the Bud Light halftime report. And how many times do you think you're going to see the headline? Holy Toledo. If the Rockets keep giving the Buckeyes trouble, and they're giving them fits right now. Toledo jumping on top 15-14. Michigan State's having no such trouble. We'll look ahead to Notre Dame and Michigan and Mississippi State and Auburn in a wild one. We'll have it all for you coming up. And we'll see, Reese, if it'll be 17-0 or 21-0 or still 14-0, depending on what happens here. Third down and three. Well, this is officially two-down territory. If you're Wisconsin, you're starting to wear out Oregon State. You can see him walking on the field here, Oregon State's defense. So I'm sure Paul Christ right here is going to slam it at him and come back again if it's fourth down and do it again. They go with two tight ends. And Wilson to throw. And Wilson throws underneath Patterson. And that's his second touchdown today. Third touchdown pass by Wilson. Nice, nice job of picking. They're going to run receivers across the field. You know, Chris, we're seeing a little different identity on Wisconsin football right now. They're letting Russell Wilson play a little bit. Let him get numbers. Confidence, and it gives other teams to think, how are we going to defend Wisconsin? He's already thrown more passes here in the first half than he did all of last week. And all three of his touchdown passes today on third down. Take, take a look, folks, at the pick right here. Pedersen does a good job of letting his guys clear. You're going to have receivers come across the field, picking off defenders for your young tight end. Just patience, patience, patience. There's a pick by Byrne and Toon. Wide open, forces the defensive back to go over top. Not enough room to cover. Pedersen does a good job of transitioning from catch to run. It doesn't have to work to catch the football. The confidence this coaching staff has placed in Russell Wilson. You could feel it when we talked to him yesterday. You could see it when you visit with the young man, and then more importantly, you see it the way they're calling this first half. And, and talking with Wilson, it came down to Wisconsin and Auburn, and the offense at Auburn under Gus Malzahn uh, very different than what you have here. This is more of a pro offense. He wants to play in the NFL, so that's why he chose to play for Paul Christ, who has coached in the NFL with the Chargers. One thing he likes about Wisconsin, and I know I don't know if he'll admit this or not, but I think it helps, is that here at Wisconsin, what's he do? He takes the majority of snaps under center, like the majority of NFL quarterbacks. So this, as you said, Dave, helps his training for the next level. Can he play at the next level? That's a big question. He's 5'10", 5'11". Well, Chris asked him that yesterday, which one do you want to choose? He's going to have the opportunity to play both. You know, how high he gets drafted, that remains to be seen. But he has a chance to go back and play pro baseball, and he, has going to, he is going to have a chance to play professional football. One of the up men falls on it at the 30-yard line for Oregon State, so 27 seconds remaining here in the half. Beavers have two timeouts left. Coming up on ABC. You got a game at 3.30 with uh, Penn State, Alabama, 4.30 on ESPN. Pretty good one between Georgia and South Carolina. How big is this game for Georgia and Mark Ritt? Well, you got school administrators talking about how big of a game it is for the football program. So when you have school administrators or board people or all the bosses, it's huge for Mark Rick. There's a lot of pressure on those kids. They want to play like Mark Rick, then they'll play for Mark Rick. They'll have to play. Steven Garcia came in in relief last week, played pretty well for South Carolina. See how he does today. On first down, Mannion looking downfield, gets hit, ball comes out. And it's ruled incomplete, arm going forward. Gilbert on the speed rush, number 11. Tough to beat. Does a good job of getting lower than the defender. Take a look, Urban. And the speed rush. They have high expectations for him. They've, Wisconsin has always had a dominant pass rusher. Always had a dominant pass rusher. They're expecting that out of number 93 or number 11 to pick up the slack. J.J. Watt last year drafted 11th overall by the Texans. He got O'Brien Schofield, Matt Shaughnessy before him. Second and 10. Mannion, wide open man. And trying to get out of bounds is Jordan Bishop, and he does. Clock stops, 13 seconds left. Ball on Wisconsin's side of the field. Job of Mannion staying in the pocket. That time they took Gilbert to help Mannion. They double teamed him. So anytime a guy gets a sack, you're able to push and slide the line to the defensive end. The best pass rusher they have right now is Gilbert. 
where you're going to try to get the ball to the 25-yard line at least to get out of the first half with a field goal. So they got to get about 20 yards. And here comes Gilbert again. Flag down. It's going to be holding. Pass is caught at the 34-yard line, but that's going to be negated. Cooks made the grab, but a clear hold in the backfield as Gilbert was mugged. Speed on the corners kills you. It makes offensive tackles very, very nervous. Well, we may have a 10-second runoff here. That's a new rule. A uh, live ball foul that would have kept the clock running. Holding on the offense, number 50. 10-yard penalty, still second down. Okay, so no runoff. Holding on Remmers. Five seconds remaining in the half. You see right here, Remmers holding on to Gilbert. That's tough duty. I mean, it's tough duty for an offensive tackle. That's why the previous down, they double-teamed them. They should have stayed with that plan. Boy, the coaches love David Gilbert. They say he has impressive guys. A junior, he's really coming to learn the game now. The last two plays has really dominated the offensive tackle. They start the clock on the penalty in Oregon State. Did not even get to snap the football, and the half comes to an end with Wisconsin on top, 21 to nothing on the strength of three Russell Wilson touchdown passes. <laughs> Quint Kesnick is standing by with Brett Bielema. Coach, for most of that first half, the run game was a struggle. What changed on the last drive? Well, they were very aggressive with their safety play. Um, not going to let us run the football, so we got to take advantage of what they give us. Obviously, opens up some things, hopefully, in the passing game. How do you best describe the play of Russell Wilson? You know, Russell's uh, the same guy every day. Uh, doesn't really get rattled. Thought that sack on him earlier got him juiced up a little bit, you know, so I think he'll come out. Hopefully, uh, score for our eyes is 0-0. Come out and play ball in the second half. What's been the most improved aspect of your defense? Well, I, we're getting off the field on third down uh, we did that last year but last week but we're having success on first down which helps us on third down and I think our guys are communicating better thanks coach Dave you can see the smile on coach Bielema's face when Quinn asked the question about Russell Wilson he, he knows what he's got with Wilson three first half touchdown passes five on the season for the transfer quarterback time now for the Bud Light halftime report and Reese Davis welcome back to college football on ESPN presented by cars.com Russell Wilson outgains the entire Oregon State team, and the Badgers lead it 21 to nothing as we get ready to start the third quarter at Camp Randall Stadium. With Urban Meyer, Chris Spielman, I'm Dave Pash. Guys, if you're Oregon State coach Mike Riley, what are you saying in the locker room? Well, the first thing you got to do is bring that team together. Human nature is the defense is going to be very upset with the offense right now. Defense is playing our hearts out. They're on the field 18 minutes in that first half. It's, it's time the offense comes together, but you have to bring that team together to make sure there's no issues as they start the second half. Yeah, and they've had some success throwing the football a little bit, and if you just get a little bit of momentum, some first downs, just to give your team some success and try to get back in this as quick as you can. And Wisconsin will start the half on offense. Aberderis and White, the return men. And White hesitated and almost tripped over Aberderis. And still gets it back to the 20 yard line. Quint Kesnick had a chance to talk with Mike Riley. Quint? Yeah, I asked him specifically about the quarterback switch he made early in this game. He said it is strictly situational and he's gearing kind of their play calls to the strengths of each quarterback. I said, Coach, it was kind of odd that Cats came out of it for the first series. He said, Well, you'll see him when we want to run a quarterback draw or a zone read or a bootleg. He thinks that Sean Mannion has a quicker release, is more accurate, uh, and a quick decision maker, which favors the game plan today. They'll have to wait till Quinn, Wisconsin on offense from its 20 yard line. And they'll run it again with the center. Peter Kahn's out there trying to block, and they pick up four yards. Ball on the carry. Let's take a look at our game track brought to you by Bud Light. Terrific first half for Russell Wilson. 12 of 14, 124 yards and three touchdowns. You know the stat you don't see on there, Dave, is he's 8 of 10 on third downs. That's the money down. That's how you extend drives, and some of those were on his own. 
All those touchdown passes were on third down by Russell Wilson. Two to the tight end, Pedersen, and then the fade to two. Play action for Wilson and a little rollout. He throws on the run very well, and he finds Toon for another catch, a 15-yard gain of the 39. See, when you have mobility like Russell Wilson and you're, and you're able to throw with accuracy from the drop back, from rolling out, and look at his eyes and vision downfield to find the open wide receivers, but what that does is that opens up the playbook for offensive coordinator Paul Christ. I mean, it gives you so much pressure on a defense because you know that this guy can hurt you from any place, any time, anywhere, throwing the football either stationary or on the run. Back to the running game. And straight ahead for good yardage is Monty Ball to the 45-yard line. It's a guy that last year was about 235 pounds. And John Clay, remember, was the guy going into last season. He was the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. Then Monty Ball and James White become the stars that lead them to a Big Ten title. Well, I remember, Dave, we were doing games, and we saw Monty Ball, and we were saying, because John Clay got nicked a little bit, John Clay couldn't get on the field. Now, John Clay was a good back, but I'll tell you what, between James White and Monty Ball, I thought Paul Chris would have been insane to put John Clay in over those two guys. He ran it 29 straight times in a win in Michigan. He'll run it again here, and ball is loose into Oregon State territory to the 46-yard line and nine-yard pickup. You can see the wear and tear. I'm watching the Oregon State defensive line right now walking back to the huddle. Very methodical. You can see the time change is hurting them, but more importantly, they've been on the field the entire day today. That's good. It is, and, and you know what? Paul Christ is in the press box right now saying, boys, pound it, pound it, pound it, and guess what? If we want to throw it on first and second down, we got it anytime we want it. James White back in as he saw Ball go to the sideline. Wilson will throw, another roll to the right on first down, and through the hands of Abraderis, who gets shoved late after the play, out of bounds by Poyer and a flag. So they got him. Not a smart play by Poyer. The play was over. Well, Chris made a great point about the opportunity to have a quarterback who can sprint out, break contain. That opens up the A gap. Late hit on the defense, number 14. 14 15-yard <laughs> penalty, automatic first down. That's not Baz, it's a Poyer that committed the foul. There's Russell on the outside, delivers a great pass. But what Chris was saying earlier, the stress that puts, you have to contain the ball now. If you contain the ball, that's going to open up the inside run game, which is, that's what Wisconsin's known for. You know, the other thing is, Russell Wilson could have ran for eight, nine yards right there. He's not looking to run, but he's smart when he does run. And he's giving his guys a chance to get involved in the ball game. And if you're looking ahead, preparing for Wisconsin, what do you take away? Toon, Abaderis, Pedersen, Byrne, they throw the ball all over the field to different receivers. More stress on the defense. White inside the 25-yard line. Got the first down. Takes it to the 19 for 12 more on the ground. You know, Urban and I had this discussion yesterday that you can put so many people in the box to stop the run. The problem is Wisconsin trusts their running backs to account for the on-block player. Right there, James White accounted for the safety that was right in the hole. He gave him a leg, took it away. The safety threw a no-hitter. James White picks an up an extra six yards. How about the fact that James White was a backup running back in high school? who was one of the best freshmen in the country last year. Well, Wisconsin's coaching staff is one of the best evaluating staffs in America. And how do you evaluate that? They win games, but they also prepare for the NFL. And you think about it, what, 16 guys the last five years in the NFL from Wisconsin. Monty Ball cuts it outside, then back inside, looking for the pylon. Gets a block from the receiver in his end. Touchdown, Badgers. Brady Ewing, the fullback, was downfield as well. And then you had the receiver at the end make the block for the final spring and touchdown. Well, you know exactly what Paul Chris is looking at. You can see it right now. The Oregon State defense is wore out. The offensive line is moving up. They're getting to the second level, and the group of receivers are the best group of receivers blocking in America. First of all, he's not giving up on a play. He knows it's a run. He runs a pass route, but he stays inside, hands inside, springs Monty Ball to the end zone. And it's 28-0. Early third. Can the Badgers be stopped on offense? It's a question for a lot of teams in the Big Ten.
Wisconsin with 54 touchdowns in its last 61 red zone trips, including all four. 4-4 four, four today. Monty Ball with his fourth touchdown run and fifth overall on the season for Ball. James White also had good yardage on that possession. We saw him late last year against Michigan and Northwestern just thrash those defenses, struggled against TCU, and lost the Rose Bowl. Malcolm Marble on the return for Oregon State. And he is stuffed around the 30-yard line. Well, it's history in the making tonight at the Big House as Michigan and Notre Dame square off in the first home game under the lights at Michigan. College football presented by Hampton Hotels on ESPN at 8 Eastern tonight. You know, the interesting thing to look forward to in that game is Brian Kelly and how he handles himself. I think he can't worry about how he handles himself. He needs to worry about coaching that team to victory against the Wolverines. Sean Mannion, the quarterback. The redshirt freshman will hand it off. Here's Jenkins, and oh, he gets tagged, but bounces off of Ethan Hemer and picks up a couple yards. I know, Urban, you were on game day talking about Brian Kelly. Too much made of that by us in the media? I think there's no question. However, the thing that set it over the edge is the language. And that's, you know, you're coaching at Notre Dame. It's a Catholic institution. A coach losing it and going crazy and trying to get his team amped up, especially when he's frustrated. That's part of the game. I think the thing that set it over the edge was that, you know, when you start seeing language out there. Chris, you agree? Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't agree. Pass is caught. First down, Oregon State across the 40-yard line as Marcus Wheaton makes the grab. I agree, but I think, you know, it is 2011, and everybody's so super sensitive. You don't need to use that kind of language, but look, my dad was a high school football coach in the 70s. He jumped everybody's rear end. I came, he jumped, he, he jumped my rear end after a Little League game like that. Actually, your dad got me a few times when I was down in South Florida recruiting. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> can only imagine what it's like for young Noah Spielman after only two tackles for a loss in a high school game. Running play, and boy, Teron Ward just bounced off Marcus Cromartie. Cromartie shaken up. Eight of two or three. More important for Notre Dame, they got a win. They lost at home to South Florida, and now a night game in Michigan, and you're going to be all fired up for that in Ann Arbor. Yeah, something to look forward to. You're right. It's going to be a tough test. But if I'm Michigan, Denard Robinson now for this game becomes a part of my running offense, which he was not against the Broncos of Western Michigan. They'll keep it on the ground with Jenkins. He hurdles one man, crosses the 45 for about two. David Gilbert there for the Badgers. No, I had a chance to talk with Chris Borland yesterday, and right there he did something that you don't want to do as a middle linebacker. He gave one for one. He ducked his head. If he would have ran through the blocker to make the tackle, he would have made a great play. He did his job, but I'm just saying, as he grows into that position of middle linebacker, he will not get for one, take on a blocker, make the tackle. He has that kind of ability. Mannion's got to make a play here on third and five. Badgers blitz, and Mannion throws a dart. First down to the 45-yard line of Wisconsin. It's Jordan Bishop. And Oregon State in Badger territory. Mannion, a big 6'5", drop back quarterback, great pocket presence. Offense line actually does a great job. Receiver settles in the zone and gets north-south for the first down. And defensively, you can't cover dirt. Run, Mike, Mike Run Riley likes his Mandy guy on the phone. Yeah. He kept talking about how impressed he was with him. Threw for almost 600 yards in a high school game. Throws it out in the flat here to Jenkins, and he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage. Mike Taylor has overcome knee problems, makes the play along with Shelton Johnson. You know, Mike Riley came to Oregon State, had a losing record, went to the San Diego Chargers for three years. They think so much of him, they brought him back. He's finishing his 11th year, six games away from being the winningest coach in Oregon State history. Went to Corvallis High School, and he goes with Ryan Katz at quarterback, now pulling Mannion for this play. Now, if it's a quarterback draw, then I, I'm a little bit concerned. Why else would he be in there? Hands it off. And Ward going nowhere. Finellis comes up and runs support from his corner spot. Third down and 10. See, I don't have an answer for you. I mean, you just had Mannion complete a big, big pass. He's got a little bit of rhythm going. So let's bring Katz in for what? To hand the ball off? What's the purpose? 
I have no answer. Well, the play they ran there was a zone read, so you wonder how this thing's developing. Is he going to be a quarterback draw guy? Is he going to be the zone read guy? Is he going to be the second up-tempo type offense guy down the future? But right, right now, we don't see that. And you got Manning in now because it's a passing situation, third and 11. And he's got time. Throws underneath that is caught, but they're going to be about eight or nine yards short of a first down. Colby Prince with the catch. Now, it's fourth down. You're down 28. You got to go for it here, right? No, I, I punt the ball. I punt the ball down in there, play some good defense, try to get the ball back at midfield. You, you did accomplish some first downs to give your defense some type of breather, but look, if you're going to go with the quarterback and he's young, then keep with him. Don't put a, another quarterback in there to hand the ball off. That's my only point. That's my opinion. That's the way I would do it. But Mike Riley's a great football coach. Been doing a long time. But I'm not changing. That's what I would do. Hacker booting it away, trying to pin after Darius deep. As fair caught at the nine-yard line. Decker's done a good job punting in terms of pinning the opponent deep. And the Badgers, Russell Wilson, retakes the field at Camp Randall in a moment. Well, if you love the NFL, you're going to get more on ESPN. NFL Countdown expands to three hours tomorrow, and it moves to a new time. 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Sports Center starts at 8 a.m. Proud to announce that eight-year extension. Monday Night Football on ESPN. New programming across the family of networks on the National Football League. And Coach Parcells back in the mix. Good to see. You. Wonder what he thinks about bringing a quarterback in to hand it off on the second down. Still fired up about that, huh? Not fired up. Just don't understand it. First down at the Wisconsin 10. And a gain of about two for James White. Tackle made by Fed T. Unga. Badgers next week play Northern Illinois at Soldier Field against their former defensive coordinator. Dave Dorn is now the head coach there. And they play an FCS school week four before hosting Nebraska. They also have Penn State here. They have to go to Ohio State and Illinois, which could be a tough game late in the year. Here's White on second and eight, and he gets clocked at the 17-yard line by Sean Martin, so it brings up third down. And Sean Martin did a good job of playing off Abadaris's block. The rule is, Urban talks about it, digging safeties. When a receiver digs a safety or hunts him up, then the corner replaces that safety and run support, exactly like young Mr. Martin did right there. You are really seeing the displacement of defense alignment by the offensive line of Wisconsin. You didn't see that for the first quarter and a half. Right, you're correct. I mean, you're seeing holes now that Wisconsin backs are used to seeing. Wearing them down. I always had big offensive linemen here, normally from Wisconsin, all five starters from this state. Wagner, Groy, Kahn, Zeitler, and Oglesby flag down. A rare Wisconsin penalty. Only averaged three per all game start. a year ago. On the you know, Dave, you talk about the offensive line being penalty. from Wisconsin. The skill athletes are all but two from the state of Texas and Florida. So there's a real, real strong recruiting philosophy that started back in 1990 with Barry Alvarez. Got and that's Von getting Dane from the East Coast. Get the big linemen from this area in Wisconsin and up north, and then go down and get you some skilled athletes from Texas and Florida. They do a great job of identifying their needs. Altoon right here away from the trips could be a possible target for Russell Wilson. Wilson on third and eight looking for an open man not there and pass caught by Aberderis but it'll be fourth down he's short by about four yards. Pressure by Henry for Oregon State. Looking for Toon on a deep crossing route to begin. The one thing Russell Wilson has we talk about the thing he has what we call a presence. There's just a winner that oozes from him, and there's no panic in Russell Wilson. I thought it was interesting, the comment he made to us yesterday, that he doesn't get nervous. And frankly, that shows in his play. Started 36 games at North Carolina State. He's a veteran and plays like one. Poyer under it in the fair catch at the 36-yard line. So Oregon State's offense will try to do something. They only have 133 yards, and they're down 28 zip on the road. ESPN's College Football. 
Brought to you by AT&T, the nation's fastest mobile broadband network. Now one of the great spots on any college campus, State Street, located in downtown Madison. 28-0 Badgers on top of Oregon State. Wisconsin ranked eighth in the country, highest rated Big Ten team. Nebraska's 10th, Ohio State 15th. But could they drop? More on that in a moment. Oregon State football on its 36. Play action and look out Mannion being chased. And the pass is incomplete. Speaking of Ohio State, here's Reese with an update. And Dane, Buckeyes not out of the woods against Toledo. Fourth and one, deep in Buckeye territory, the senior Adonis Thomas. I think they'll be thinking Adonis looks pretty good in Toledo at the moment. And the Rockets on top of Ohio State, 22-21 in the third. And look at West Virginia. Are they, are they aware that this game has started? Norfolk State is up 6-3 in the second. How about the job Tim Beckman's done in Toledo? 20, 20 seniors, Dave, from Toledo coming into Ohio Stadium, not intimidated. Former Urban Meyer defensive coordinator. Here's Jordan Jenkins, a shoe comes off. And no gain of the play from Marty there for Wisconsin. Marcus Cromartie's done a nice job filling in for a Divine who got hurt earlier, Devin Smith, excuse me, who got hurt earlier in the game. Outstanding run support. Remember, he missed a tackle earlier, but right then and there, he wasn't shy. He still came up there and delivered a nice little shot. Got a new defensive coordinator with Chris Ash. We mentioned Dave Dorn, another head coach in Northern Illinois. Keep an eye on Gilbert here. Remember, he's been pressuring his quarterback in third down and long, the left end. Canyon gets it away. The pass caught. Stevenson, but good D by Cromartie. He's short of the marker, so it's fourth down at about three. We'll see what Oregon State does here. I just think you got to punt the ball. I mean, it's tempting right now just to get back in this game, but if you if you don't make it, it's seven points. Looks like he's going for it. I mean, what's the difference? You're down 28. You could beat 28 nothing. You could beat 48 nothing. Take a shot. Travel a long way. Might as well go ahead and take a shot. You got here. You get up early in the morning, man. Got to go. <laughs> Red Park. Mandon on fourth and three. The pitch. And no way. Cooks wrapped up and thrown down for a loss, and the Badgers take over on downs. Shelton Johnson did a good play, the strong safety. Okay, one of the criticisms last week about you or Wisconsin's defense was lack of speed against UNLV. It wasn't lack of speed. They didn't know what they were doing. This week, they know what they're doing. When you know what you're doing, then you play fast. As a football player, thought brings hesitation. Chris Ash eliminated thought, thus you eliminate hesitation. Then you get a lot of white W helmets running to the football with speed and intent. So Wisconsin takes over at the 43-yard line of Oregon State. You see uh, James Rogers there with his uh, jersey on. They're hoping to get him back soon. They need all the help they can get. No playmakers right now with James and his brother Jack Quiz leaving early and then getting drafted in the fifth round. Play fake. Wilson being chased and goes for Pedersen. And the ball came out, so it's incomplete. Did not complete the catch. Coverage by Michael Doctor. Earlier we were talking about Wisconsin and how it recruits and its philosophy. And, and, and Urban, you've done both. You've recruited for need and we've also used all the services to try to get the top players in the country well there's two distinct styles of recruiting number one is you go after the best three defensive ends in the country and it's all about the recruiting war recruiting battle and find a way to get them on signing date the other one is evaluate and fit that's how you find a backup uh, tailback at st thomas aquinas and that's james white monty ball is in for him right now ball straight ahead keeps the feet moving and plunges forward to the 40 yard line here, just to give you an idea what Urban and Chris are talking about here, on the left side you have that, uh, that and first strategy that Urban mentioned, then recruit to fit your school there on the right-hand side. Well, the common theme of the teams on the left are they come from really talent-rich states, and they are a high-profile program. So you simply would go after, you evaluate flat war until you get that guy. You take a Wisconsin and Boise State, Wisconsin, and, and, and like Chris Mueller said, maybe Iowa, two of the best teams that evaluate and pick in players that fit their system. 
Wilson on third down and seven dumps it off. Inside the 35 is Pedersen a little bit short of the first down. Hey, go for it here if you're Wisconsin. Uh, the one point that I want to add to that is that Wisconsin knows exactly who they are. And plus, when you evaluate talent, you have to be able to project. So if you project properly, then you always have veterans on your football team. Nobody's leaving early. You have fourth and fifth year starters on that offensive line. This is why you have the productive offensive line that you have as they line up to go for it. Fourth down in a yard. It's ball. First down inside the 15 and out of bounds inside the 10. Sprung by Abaderas, number four, the key block. Once again, Oregon State defense, I thought, played it well. They played it well, but the receiver sprung them, and the, and the tailback did a great job bouncing outside and used athleticism. Oregon State defends that well. Well, yeah, well they corner, do, yeah. Three. They do, but they don't replace. So he cracks on a corner, so the safety now has to become contained, which means turn the ball back inside, which he does not. And Monty Ball with patience, vision, and burst equals big yards. Defensive football, one guy makes an error. You're playing with 10 guys. Out the door. Ball cuts it inside, grabbed by Cameron Collins. Still gets to about the five-yard line. You know, I want to go back, Dave, to what Chris said about redshirting players. When we are at Florida, there was no such thing as a redshirt. You came in, you played, or you got beat out. Because you only got them sometimes for three years. In Wisconsin, that's a tremendous advantage. They know who they are. To be able to redshirt and have a guy in your program for five years, nowadays that's very rare. But you see Wisconsin taking advantage of it. That's where they get these tremendous offensive linemen and defensive linemen. Second and goal. Ball again behind two blockers. Takes a hit and picks up two, the initial stick by Sean Martin. Well, you look at the quarterback situation, that's where the things are a little bit different for Wisconsin this year because of Russell Wilson. The guy they had to back him up or actually be the starter before Wilson announced the transfer was John Budmeyer, who was the backup last year. They weren't sure about Budmeyer's talent level. Budmeyer also now dealing with an injury. So they end up getting Russell Wilson, who can maybe get them to that BCS title That's level. One disadvantage about Wisconsin and the type of offense they run, they're not going to get the high-profile high school quarterback because they don't want to be in a spread and jack the ball 50 times a game. It's not happening here. Third down and goal. They'll run ball again, heading for pay dirt, and he did not get in. So it'll be fourth down and goal. You would think Wisconsin would go for it here when we start the fourth quarter. How about Coach Belima when he talked about the recruiting of Russell Wilson sitting there in spring and April looks on here's about it here's about this great quarterback that wants to leave pulls it up on the internet falls in love with him on film and starts doing his research yeah. next thing you know you got one of the best quarterbacks in America showing up on your campus in the summer Brett Bielema does identify recruit well and get it going so fourth down for Wisconsin when we start the fourth Badgers on top 28 nothing Tradition before the fourth quarter here at Camp Randall Stadium. It's Urban Meyer's first look since he was a GA at Ohio State to jump around. I don't think they were doing jump around back in the late 80s. Oh boy, this is an impressive place. I bet they like to jump around better when they got a quality football team, which they do. And they're going to go here on fourth down and goal from the one yard line, leading 28 to nothing. Here's Paul. Over the top, touchdown. Another touchdown run for Monty Ball, his second one today, and his sixth overall touchdown of the year. 35-0, Wisconsin. We mentioned up next for the Badgers, Northern Illinois. It's Soldier Field, then South Dakota, 
Then they enter the Big Ten schedule with a night game here against Nebraska. Barry Alvarez said that it's been the hardest ticket to get since he's been here. You see tough road games at Michigan State, at Ohio State, Penn State at home. Guys, what, what are some of the stumbling blocks? You see the obvious ones. Is there somebody in there that we're not talking about that could maybe trip them up? Northern Illinois can get you. Now, I'm not saying Northern Illinois is going to beat them, but you have Dave Dorn, a former defensive coordinator, in Soldier Field, the, the geographical rivalry between Wisconsin and Northern Illinois. I just think it's one of those games that Brett Bielema has to be ready for his guys to play. He can't let it have a letdown, but he does have a senior group with a senior quarterback that's explosive, and they believe who they are, and they know who they are. I think they have a very clear scheduling philosophy. That means soft on schedule, get themselves ready for Nebraska, and I don't disagree with that at all. Their job is not to have the hardest schedule in America. It's just their job is to find a way to compete for the Big Ten championship, and they're set up this year to do that with that schedule. Well, again, that Nebraska game here is going to be awesome. A night game, uh, Nebraska's first year in the Big Ten. But obviously a, a terrific quarterback battle. Taylor Martinez for the Huskers, Russell Wilson for Wisconsin. And the kick goes into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20. That's the last chance for drivers to make the chase for the Sprint Cup. Tony Stewart and Dale Earnhardt Jr. need a win to lock their spot in the chase. And Denny Hamlin is fighting for his postseason life. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Richmond. Coverage begins at 8. Uh, tonight, ABC 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Richmond, the home of Russell Wilson. By the way. Wilson with three first half touchdown passes and a lot of handing off here in the second half. Now Oregon State from its 20 yard line. Jenkins gets to about the 23. Well, let's check in with Reese Davis now in the studio. Hey, Sports Center right now presented by Discover Card. The possibility of expansion of the Pac-12 is still fluid. Larry Scott, the commissioner last night, said he hoped there would be no more expansion, but a couple of Big 12 schools telling Joe Shad still on the table. Ohio State thought they'd get three suspended players back today. They got some more questions to answer, and Athletic Director Gene Smith says he's not necessarily confident they'll be ready for the Miami game. And that certainly would not help Ohio State, considering they're also having trouble with Toledo today. Catch there by Bishop short of the first down at the 28. Third down coming up. And just a, a comment about Larry Scott, the Pac-12 commissioner. You know, he's he's not going to sit around. I mean, you see Texas A&M going to try to jump to the SEC. He's not going to stand idly by. That guy's a visionary. He thinks ahead. He advances the game, and he's going to try to make his move sooner rather than later. So is it just a matter of time where we're in my opinion, four or five yes. super conferences? And is that good for college football? Mannion dumps it off. First down catch for Jenkins. Boy, you just, Dave, you brought up a great question. Is that good for college football? You know, is it good to take away a rivalry game that's been around for 80 plus years? Is it good to start disrupting a fan base? You know, I get all the financial parts of a super conferences and all that, but at the end of the day, someone has to fight for the good of the game. Is it good for college football? I can't answer that to say all. So let's start breaking up these rivalry games. And I, I, I'm a traditionalist. Let's stay back. Let's keep the Big 12 what it is. Let's keep the Pac-12 what it is and let these guys go play. Run play to Ward, and he's hit in the backfield and dropped by Mike Taylor. Oh, what Bob Stoop said this week was interesting. When asked about the Oklahoma-Texas rivalry, he kind of said, eh, so if we lose it, big deal. I was kind of surprised when I heard that from him, given the history there with OU Texas. Well, I, I think he, as, a, as a coach in the program, you see what's coming down the road. And so, yes, you could lose that, and that would be a shame. But you have to go ahead and be ready to move because that your future is staring in the face. And it's going to happen. It's inevitable. Mannion here on second and ten, looking downfield. Got a man open, and it's caught inside the 40 by Bishop. That's Took a, nice a shot throw. at the 35-yard line. Right there, you see what Mike Riley sees in young Mr. Mannion right there, standing tall in the pocket and delivering a strike over two defenders with touch. So we've seen Mannion go ahead and throw the ball with some zip. And also, this is a great touch pass. Standing tall in the pocket, staying patient, and throwing his receiver open, meaning thrown to a spot in between the safety and the linebackers. You see clearly a catch and then the fumble after. So first down, Desmond Southward with the hit by 
the Badgers. Borland downfield too. Pass caught by Wheaton. Maybe Mannion getting in a little bit of a rhythm here. First down, Oregon State. We're so used to seeing Oregon State with the Rogers brothers just moving up and down the field, having a great success. They have to have some people step up. Number two, Wheaton. Number 13, freshman Brandon Cooks. And Jordan Bishop, number 23, are guys they have to have step up for them to keep in the pack, for them to compete in the Pac-12. Uh, two surgeries on that knee for James Rogers after the injury in game five uh, last season. Pass underneath. Ball comes out, rolled incomplete, intended for the tight end, Prince. Good win for Arizona State last night at home against Missouri. And in the Pac-12, obviously you've got Oregon coming off a loss. It'll be interesting to see what USC does this year. And Stanford, everybody talking about Andrew Luck and Stanford. And Arizona State could make things interesting. Utah going in and play USC today. Yeah. Kyle Woodingham, Urban's former defensive coordinator with the Utes. Nine straight Pac-10 teams coming out their schedule. Mannion broken up by Shelton Johnson. Good defense and now a flag. Late penalty flag thrown. Brandon Cooks, the intended receiver. It looked like good defense initially, but an official saw something there. I think the left hand Pass hooks him. On the defense, number 24. Automatic first down, spot of the foul. His right hand's good, but I think the left hand had a little bit of a hook or a hold. Well, that, you know, that, no, he, his hands look good. I think he just got there a little early. To me, I've been accused of being biased. It was a nice play. You've been accused of being biased. Defensively biased, yes. I'm glad you qualified it. Run play inside the 15, and Ward keeps the feet moving, gets to the 10-yard line. Here four, Patrick Buttram on the stop for Wisconsin. A lot of questions going this game about the defense of Wisconsin. I think they're answering a lot of those questions. Chris Ash has a lot of confidence. He said the heart and soul is our defensive line, and they're playing like it today. So you do believe they've answered questions against Oregon State's all no question. No question. I think Oregon State's a mid-level Pac-10 team, Pac-12 team right now. But Wisconsin's controlling the line of scrimmage they have the whole game. Mannion facing pressure up the middle, his hand hit, and then it's caught by an offensive lineman. Grant Johnson, the center, then he coughs it up. Flags are down. And I think Wisconsin recovered the fumble. But again, penalty flags down. Mike Taylor hit the quarterback, hit his arm. The ball fluttered. Is recovered by the Badgers, but again, let's see what the penalty is. Jordan Cahoot with the uh, fumble recovery. Right there, Chris Ash staying aggressive, coming with the blitz. There was no play for illegal touching as the fumble was ruled on the play. Yeah, ball, uh, arm wasn't going forward, so no illegal touching in the offensive lineman. So turnover, and that's Wisconsin ball when we come back. It's a pretty good picture for how things have gone offensively for Oregon State today. Center catches it, fumble recovery, then coughs it up, turns it over. So back in Madison, Wisconsin ran the ball on first down, picked up two yards. James White was the ball carrier. See if the Badgers just try to melt the clock. It's not always the case. We've seen them in the past continue to run their offense till the gun. They weren't milking the clock on defense with that pressure. Play fake for Wilson, and Pedersen is wide open. He's been wide open all day, and he's got some wheels down the sideline. Nailed out of bounds near midfield. Almost a 35-yard pickup before Lance Mitchell makes the hit. It's called a man-beater right there. He's got a running start. Pedersen does in motion. He's one-on-one -on -one with Reuben Robinson, who peeks inside at the run fake, allowing Pedersen to gain ground on him. Then he's off to the races. 
But if you're going to play man coverage, you have to eyeball your man. Once he blocks, then you find the football. But if he doesn't block, your eyes must stay with him at all times. Here's White. And they're looking for the cutback. Not there. Sean Martin on the stop for Oregon State. So no game. You know, David's getting real close to time to start to find out or maybe make some substitutions, find out who your backup quarterback is, because you're going to need them. And this is not, this is a quality opponent you're going to get a chance to go play against. So with nine minutes left in the fourth quarter, you're up 35 to nothing. I'm sure those discussions are being had right now. Well, you mentioned Bud Myers. You look at Joe Brennan. Brennan is a redshirt freshman. He is the number two right now. Might have been anyway without the injury to Bud Meyer. Had surgery on his throwing arm last week. They're not sure when he'll be back. As Wilson takes a seat, gets maybe a yard. Sean Martin on the stop again. There's something Russell Wilson talked about yesterday, a little bit element of the spread offense. That's something they're going to keep in their arsenal. And with why they ran that looking forward is they're going to force other teams that are scouting them. To, oh, what's this? They got a little spread in there? Why wouldn't you hold it until a bigger game? Why just, would you put it out there now? Just just to make sure that other teams know that you have it and then to be aware of it. They're not going to make their money on it, but they do have it. And here it is right now. So they're getting some practice game reps, game speed with the spread offense. Third and nine. Patterson with the catch, trying to break a tackle. And takes about three or four shots, keeps going, but he's two yards short of the first down. Wisconsin might go for it again here. Cameron Collins made the initial hit. So do you agree with the philosophy of showing that early in the season to make teams study it, or would you hold it, Urban? I would show it. I'd, I'd get some game reps with it. And there's a lot of defensive coordinators right now in the Big Ten that were maybe watching this game. The minute you start seeing that element with the downhill rushing attack that they have, that's a lethal, that's a lethal offense. Right Norman will punt it away here. Hoyer, the deep man. And Wisconsin's got two guys down there, a perfect punt, and they down it at the one. Great job by the Badgers. They had two guys down there. Gene was down there for Wisconsin, along with Zuliger. Two of the greats in coaching go head-to-head -head as Nick Saban's Alabama Crimson Tide faces Joe Paterno and Penn State. College football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings on ABC at 3.30 Eastern. How good is Alabama at the quarterback position? Find that out today. Penn State, too, right? Yeah. Meanwhile, Oregon State starting this drive from the one, and they're going to let Mannion throw and over the middle it goes to Wheaton for a first down of the 12-yard line. I think we're seeing the future of Oregon State football in the next three or four years right now with Mannion throwing a short ball control passing game and trying to get the zone running game going. They just have to get some depth back at the tailback. It meant Malcolm Magnum back. The guy that ran for 233 against Sacramento State a week ago. As a true freshman, then hurt his hamstring in practice and did not make the trip. Manning off play action, and good throw there. First down across the 30-yard line. Wheaton again. That's a gain of close to 20. Urban talked about substitution on the offensive side of the ball. Wisconsin has substituted new linebackers, and they've been rotating their front four all day long. So this is a chance to get some valuable experience for those young men right there in the 50s and 30s number. Katz is out there now at quarterback to Wheaton with a blocker in front and Wheaton picks up about nine to the 41. All right. So they go back to Katz. Yeah. Again, when you go to Katz, we're running a little bit of the spread element, but uh, I think it's something that Mannion can do. I know he doesn't run as well. Here's Wheaton again, and that's a forward pass, so it's incomplete. Bring up third down. You want to ask him to come in and throw the ball. He's not been warming up. We've watched him. He's standing on the sidelines. He's handled this situation well today. Then now you bring Mannion back in. So, I, you know, I don't think, I mean, maybe it's for today. 
but I don't think Mike Riley's going to use this as they progress forward and become a two quarterback system team and because you're going to able to game plan to what Katz does and what Mannion does. It, it, it helps the defense, as a matter of fact. It doesn't hurt them, it helps them. Mannion to throw on third and one. Got a completion and a first down. Kevin Cummings on the grab to move the chains to the 47. You know, this issue at quarterback for Oregon State's not going to go away either. Ryan Kantz is a junior returning starter. Sean Mannion's a redshirt freshman. You know, as he can open up each week in practice for the guy that has the best week of practice, let him play. He's he raved about Mannion this week on the phone in practice last week. If Katz, will he have the opportunity to come back and earn that spot again? Well, Mannion's numbers have gotten better. Maybe struggled early, but 20 of 31 overall. That pass caught and a flag down. Might be a roughing quarterback. Prince made the catch. First Shelton Johnson ball. on the tackle. The passer on the defense, defense, number 13. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. While we have a moment, let's check in with Reese in the studio. Dave, every week we honor the AT&T All-America Player of the Week. And I tell you, Ford International's T.Y. Hilton got off to a great start. Seven catches, 201 yards, couple of scores. The Golden Panthers beat Louisville. First win over a team from a BCS AQ conference. Text vote to 55862 on your wireless phone. Cast your vote and enter for a chance to win a trip to the national title game. Now some great college football action coming up later today, Reese. We talked about Alabama, Penn State on ABC. Tonight, you got Michigan, Notre Dame on ESPN. South Carolina, Auburn at 4.30 Eastern on ESPN. Teron Ward gets the call. Running the football picks up a couple. They'll have a week off after this. Oregon State will, so they'll have two weeks before they play UCLA to evaluate the two quarterbacks and figure out where they want to go from there. As Katz is on the field right now. Well, I think when you look at it, Wisconsin knows who they are, what they are. And Mike Riley, with his quarterback situation, I don't know if they have an identity of who they are on offense. take off on the quarterback draw and Finellis with the tackle at the 30 yard line so third down coming up and the one thing you are getting the benefit is you're getting both guys valuable game reps at game speed which just in case one of them goes down with injury during the season one of them at least has game reps under their belt I think Chris hit it right on the head you're gonna see Oregon State have a traditional offense short passing game zone running with Manning at quarterback and the spread quarterback draw bubble screens with Katz. They run Manning back on the field. Katz goes to the sideline on third and three. And Manning with a quick throw. Stevenson was coming out of the backfield. And it's a first down to the 23. I like the fact that Mike Riley is throwing the football and being aggressive down 35 nothing. It's easy for a coach to say, well, let's work on our power running game. But right now he's sending a message to his team that we're going to fight and we're going to keep going at it. We're going to be aggressive. Man, you're going to get level. Back at the 34-yard line, sacked by Bo Allen. You talked about how Chris Ash likes those four defensive tackles, and they've all played well today. And big Bo Allen lost 20 pounds from last year. He's out there as a three technique, and all he does is throw a nice little swim move. The offensive guard makes the fatal error, just like in tackling. You lower your head, you lose sight of your target, and Bo Allen made him pay with a quick little swim move. What was that left arm came over the top of the head, finished with the sack. Second and 21. And on the run is Cooks. And he gets pretty good yardage close to the 20. By the way, Ohio State is back on top of Toledo 27-22. West Virginia is down at the half to Norfolk State. When you talked earlier, guys, about Wisconsin can't overlook its next opponent in Northern Illinois. Maybe some other schools are doing that today, like Ohio State and West Virginia. And the score would indicate, although Toledo is a pretty good football team, again, 20 seniors, veteran team going into Ohio State. And 
running free was a defensive lineman as they tried to set up a screen. Mannion took a shot, and then Stevenson couldn't hang on to it. It's fourth and eight. Well, let's go back to your comment about not overlooking an opponent. When you have an opponent that has good film, Northern Illinois, Toledo, those aren't bad teams. You'll get the attention of your team when you show the film. When you really have to, a concern as a coach is when you flip on the film and they're not very good. And your players see it, especially you got a veteran group of guys, and they take a week off of practice or a day off of practice. And that's when, you know, that's when the coach has to jump in and make sure you don't do that. Yeah. Players know who's good and who's not good. Believe me, they're smarter than coaches think sometimes. <laughs> Mannion on fourth and eight. Throws short for some reason. It's caught by Cummings, but it'll be a turnover on downs. So with 2.38 left, Wisconsin's offense back on the field to seal the deal, leading 35-0. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. And in part by Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Back in Madison, where Wisconsin is rolling over Oregon State, 35 0. Russell Wilson is done for the day. Only seven incompletions in two games, five touchdowns for Russell Wilson. Redshirt freshman Joe Brennan is the backup quarterback. They also have a true freshman, Joel Stavi, that they like a lot at that position. John Budmeyer, who was going to be the backup, is out with an injury. Penalty flag down. They got a new running back in there as well, and redshirt freshman Jeff Lewis. I think about Russell Wilson, you know, a lot of times. Ball starts on the offense, number 78, five yard penalty, still first down. He doesn't have to be the guy. What he has to do is be efficient in which he is. And you look at his stats today, 17 of 21, two of those were throwaways, the other two were drops. And so he's efficient what he does. He understands he has talent around him, and his job is to be the point guard and distribute the football, which he does very well. Remember at NC State, he had a stretch of almost 400 straight passes without an interception. Running the football is Jeff Lewis, and he's into the secondary and thrown out of bounds at the 36, 22-yard run. Coming up today, two SEC East teams square off early conference showdown with Georgia facing South Carolina. College football presented by cars.com. Marcus Lattimore, one of the best running backs in the country. You see how Georgia players respond. I mean, there's clear and evident pressure on Mark Rick right now. Are they gonna be tight or are they gonna have fun, play football, and that way play at their best? Lost to Boise State last week. Lewis trying to pick a hole and he gets stopped for a two yard gain. Here's Reese in the studio. Toledo and Ohio State back and forth. They moved to the fourth quarter at the shoe. This was late in the third when Carlos Hyde scored for the second time today. And Ohio State, which hasn't lost to a team from its own state since 1921, only up by five on Toledo in the fourth. West Virginia and Norfolk State out of the MEAC. It's at the half, and Norfolk State's up by a deuce. Wow. Well, we've seen uh, Bosman throw 27 passes, so you wonder if Braxton Miller uh, has even been in the game or if he's been in the game, how often he's been in the game. Lewis could not keep his balance, got maybe a yard. You know, Dave, go back to Russell Wilson. If they continue to develop as an offense, and as like Chris Fieldman said, they make, and make some noise in the BCS, that could go down as one of the biggest transfers in the history of college football. If you think about getting a guy that started 36 games, has his ability, and make the impact he's going to make on this offense. I'm trying to think back if there's ever been that much of an impact player step on campus. You know, usually you, you don't see a guy transfer that late in his college career, but Wilson had already received his degree. Right in the pass here, so they're going to let him sling it downfield, going deep on third and nine, overshot. His intended receiver, Jeff Duckworth, so it's fourth down. That, I mean, it, when I saw this happen, this whole Russell Wilson thing go down, I'm sitting home and I'm thinking, Brett Bielema, he just hit the lottery. I mean, there were question marks. Kurt Phillips, remember, a highly touted quarterback that they have uh, slated in at one time to replace Scott Tolzien blew out his both ACLs. They really didn't have a, a, a established plan, and all of a sudden, Russell Wilson falls into your lap along with Monty Ball, James White, a veteran offensive line, a veteran secondary returning. This is their time, and this is their shot. If you're Wisconsin, this is the year you're excited. 
Well, here's some numbers you talk about, Urban. On the defense, number 47, five yard penalty, still four seven. Now, both you guys talking about this. How prolific Wilson is as a transfer. Here, here's some other guys. Let me just throw out some other names here, okay? Troy Aikman had one touchdown pass at Oklahoma before transferring to UCLA. Ryan Mallett had seven at Michigan. Uh, Mitch Mustaine had 10 before transferring. Brock Berlin had 11. Masoli had 28 at Oregon. Russell Wilson had 76 at NC State before transferring to Wisconsin. Yeah, it's unprecedented. Success and credibility. Fourth and three, Wisconsin going for it after the penalty on Oregon State. Lewis, and he gets creamed short of the marker. Anthony Watkins made the stick, and Oregon State will take over on downs and we come back. 42 seconds left, Wisconsin 35-0. Notre Dame, Michigan tonight on ESPN. A home game under the lights for the first time. Denard Robinson and Michigan against Michael Floyd and the Irish. College football presented by Hampton Hotels. And Denard Robinson, I'm going to predict, will be a factor running the football. He'll be part of the game plan in running the football when you play a quality opponent like Notre Dame. 40 seconds left. Mannion throws complete to the 30-yard line, pulled in by Guachem. Uh, reset the uh, football and then run the clock. Wisconsin will go to 2-0, eighth in the country, Northern Illinois, and then an FCS opponent before they host Nebraska October 1st. Another penalty flag moving all over the place by Oregon State. You know, go back to Denard Robinson at Michigan. At one point last year, he was a leader in the Heisman voting or in the conversation about Heisman candidates. He was number one. Yeah, he had my vote. Let me no, ask you early this. On. Let me ask you this. I know, again, week two, we don't want to get carried away about starting to pick guys, but project, project for me. Is it possible that Russell Wilson will be in the discussion at some point if he continues to play like this? Now, get big if, but what do you think? Well, if people watch him All play, starts. yes. On the offense, number 78. But. The offense, would you like to time out? To avoid a 10 second runoff. I mean, can he get the numbers? Can he get the production? No, because they're too good and too balanced offensively for him to put up those Heisman crazy numbers. And I know that Denard Robinson is part of running the football, but again, Brady Hoke doesn't want him to run every single time. Last year in the opener, Denard Robinson ran a lot against Western Michigan. He didn't. He's going to run when he has to run, and he's the biggest threat in the hands with, with the ball in his hands. So a timeout taken to avoid the runoff. We'll be back in a moment with Wisconsin in command. One of the questions going forward, what will they do if Devin Smith, starting corner for Wisconsin, is out for an extended period of time? You see him there get hurt in this contest. Marcus Cromartie has played well in his place. As Mannion throws here on first down. And it's broken up. Incomplete. 21 seconds left. A couple more seconds tick by, so 19 remaining in the game. I love the fact that Oregon State isn't sitting on it. You got a young quarterback, let him play. Let him get after it and try to get some success. He took one of the timeouts to avoid the 10 second runoff rule. Sending a message to your team that as a head coach, Mike Riley will not quit. Mannion's pass is caught. And that should be the final play unless Oregon State calls a timeout here. Catch by Cummings, and that'll do it. Russell Wilson with four incompletions and three touchdowns as Wisconsin rolls 35 to nothing over Oregon State. And Brett Bielema's team improves to 2-0 and on the season. An update on Ohio State. Auburn, Mississippi State coming up on College Football Scoreboard next here on ESPN. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For our entire crew, Urban Meyer, Chris Spielman, Quint Kestick down on the field. I'm Dave Pash. So long from Madison, where the Badgers beat Oregon State 35 to nothing. Now let's go to Reese Davis in the studio.